What are some of the risks? One is, is that the AI is only as intelligent as how it's trained. And we're seeing that already at play that, you know, some of these tools will give you answers that are really lacking substance behind them. And if the results of AI are being presented as truth, it's going to require humans to go in and understand and verify what the sources of those truth are. And many AI systems don't provide a proof that is available for the consumer. And in order for us to conduct ourselves in a world in which we are relying on AI to provide a truth, that proof that we accept as being the source verifier, we are gonna have to come to consensus on what that looks like and we're not there yet. And actually, interestingly, Stanford Codex, the group that I had gone to work for after law school and that I'm still affiliated with as a, as a fellow, their focus right now is how to build ethics into AI. And there aren't many efforts going on right now on the planet dedicated to this, but I think it's the most important, important thing we should be investing in is getting together multinational groups to talk about AI ethics. It's doable and it's, we've seen what it can look like. You can design these humanistic verification systems that work in tandem with these AI tools, but those are going to require us to really focus on what that means. And it's going to take some very, very serious coming together to agree on those standards. Well, we don't agree on the standards without AI, so it seems like agreeing on them in AI seems difficult. It's definitely a difficult but not impossible endeavor. What are AI ethics? There's various camps of thoughts of what that looks like. You know, ethics as a field exists. Hank Greeley at, at Stanford Law School is a great ethicist. And as a profession, ethics has continued to evolve with humanity. It hasn't gone anywhere. It hasn't been, you know, written off as being a soft science that we don't need in the age of technology. It's here. It's very much intact. And I think, you know, one of the ways we can accomplish this is taking the professional ethicists and bring them into the field of AI. And, and we've seen some efforts around that. The challenge is, is that how do you take ethics and make it computational? And computational ethics is what will result in the regulation of AI eventually. That's how we get there. We take pockets of these professional thinkers, bring them into a computational AI group, and that computational AI group is what then translates into the regulatory bodies that oversee AI. Do ethics represent what we aspire to or what is now? It's certainly the checks and balances of looking at where we are with innovation and coming together and really thinking deeply about, is this ethical? Is this right? Is this in the best service of humanity? And the law has actually been an incredible source of reference because it tests ethics through the judicial system all the time because many of our laws are based on that very same exercise. And so ethics is both something we aspire to, but it is in the fabric of humanity. It's in the fabric of Western civilization. It has always been aspired to, and it is something that carries with it a spirit that translates generation after generation. And I think that the translation that we are feeling today is the feeling that we need ethics to catch up to where technology is. Do we witness ethics at play in nature? Uh, nature is the ultimate source of all logic and reason. It is where life comes from. Life is deeply logical. It's deeply ethical. Nature relies on energy in a way 
that is very fair. It, it takes what it needs to do the task that it's genetically made up to do. And nature is remarkably resilient, as is ethics. <laughs>